close your eyes and try to keep your awareness with the breath all the way in, all the way out. It's in this way that the mind gains strength by sticking with one thing that it knows is good. Strength of mind is something we all need. Strength of the body is something that comes and goes. And as the strength of the body goes, that's when we need strength of the mind more and more. But we have to realize that it doesn't have to depend on the body. As the Buddha said, it starts with conviction. We're convinced that the Buddha was really awakened. And the message of his awakening is that our mind has power. The mind comes first, as the Buddha said. The mind is what shapes our reality, shapes our life. And so that gives us more reason to want to look into the power of the mind, to make sure that we use it well, and that we develop it as much as we can. If we don't develop it, it's like a plant that hasn't been fed, hasn't been watered, hasn't been fertilized. It may grow, but not very well. But if you tend to it, it will grow, and it will be healthy and strong. So if you're convinced that what you do to the plant is going to help the plant, then of course you're going to do more for it. It's the same with the mind. If you're really convinced in the power of the mind, you'll be able to develop it. From there you develop persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. But it all starts with conviction. As the Buddha said, he couldn't bring nirvana out to show to people. It is the ultimate health, he said. It is the ultimate strength. He couldn't show it to others, but he could show them the way. But they would have to be convinced that, one, the way worked, and two, that nirvana was really worth it. But if they were willing to show forth their conviction, as he said, then the doors to the deathless were open. So make sure that you cultivate your conviction that, yes, the mind does have this power, and you want to make the most of it. From that conviction, all the other forms of mental strength will then come.